Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure for me to, to be here today. I know that you have a, a, a very good departments in, uh, in St. Petersburg uh, treating radiation therapy and brachytherapy too. So uh, it's not only to explain what we do, but to share the different ways we can do this old technique, the first technique uh, to treat cancer uh, one century ago. So at this moment, maybe this can be uh, something of the past, or maybe we can change the way we are doing and using brachytherapy. Uh, and this is the the uh, topic today because is really brachytherapy going to disappear or uh, because SBRT is able to do more and better things so I will try to show you which is or what, what I consider is the place of uh, brachytherapy nowadays well uh, this is the, the subject brachytherapy versus IMRT, IGRT, SBRT. Uh, we know that brachytherapy is the best way to give a high dose of radiation to small volumes. We all know that. This is uh, one of the reasons because it's so effective. But the development of radiation surgery displaced the use of brachytherapy in brain tumors, avoiding the aggressiveness of inserting catheters through surgery. I did in the past, 22 years ago. Stereotactic body uh, radiation therapy is achieving new indications and optimal outcomes in small volume tumors, avoiding the invasiveness and discomfort of brachytherapy. Therefore, the question is clear, it's open, and the debate nowadays is between invasiveness, of course, uh, some people like to call brachytherapy interventional radiation therapy, but it's more important results, comfort, and accuracy. So, coming to discuss all that. Of course, after this uh, session you have had before, uh, when radiation surgery was not available, uh, we did brachytherapy. I remember a few cases inserting the catheters by the uh, neurosurgeon, and of course, it was a bit complicated. And at the end, we realized that uh, was possible, but results were very uh, contradictory. So at the end, uh, we started and my, my own hospital with uh, uh, radio surgery, and we realized that uh, the time of brachytherapy in brain. <laughs> Uh, has had finished. So the answer is clear. There is no place or minimal for brachytherapy in brain tumors. When I read this, the title of this morning, neurosurgery and, and, and neuro-oncology, I decided, wait, well, my talk has finished now. Two slides are enough. <laughs> Fortunately, we are going to talk about other options. Why? Because, well, this is, you know, the incidence, mortality, prevalence by cancers in, in the Russian Federation. And you, you, you can see, let me, the pointer is this. Yes. Uh, well, mm, I've uh, put this uh, red line around the tumors that were brachytherapy nowadays is useful. If you count the number of cases and deaths, of course we have a lot of thousands of patients that can be treated with brachytherapy at this moment. And of course, not only uh, cancers that can have a, a big mortality, but the skin non-melanoma is one of the main indications of brachytherapy nowadays. Come on to discuss a bit all that. Of course, if we consider males and females, we know that here, the therapeutic surgery is mandatory. Everybody agree nowadays that there's no other better way to treat therapical cancer. And for corpus surgery, for endometrium, again, it's mandatory. Maybe not so aggressive like in therapeutics, but uh, we know that we should use this. Well, and breast, what about breast? Uh, of course, we can use in both senses. I will re uh, review that. We can use in 
younger women yeah. with as a brachybos, and I will discuss why to use it instead of external beam uh, radiation techniques, or in uh, the opposite, in early tumors with the partial breast irradiation, APBI. And again, in prostate, you know that low risk cases can be, at the moment, the best option is low dose brachytherapy, maybe high dose rate brachytherapy that can be used, but it's not so long the, the, the follow up. And in high risk, absolutely <coughs> yes, even if in my own department some fellows uh, disagree and they consider that external radiation plus hormonal therapy is the best. Well, we know that we have have data to show that this is not real and we should use brachytherapy. And of course, in other kind of tumors, for example, lung or bronchus, you have said before, uh, well, we have more cases, so we have more new cases in the other lung, small tumors that we can treat with brachytherapy properly. So, come on to discuss. Which is the situation, for example, this paper I found that last year from a Russian author, is the state uh, cancer registry showed that breast cancer incidence in Russia is increased cervical cancer is increasing but mortality fortunately for breast is decreasing what does it mean that we will have more second tumors with a longer follow-up so we will have more work for brachytherapy and in cervical but cervix cancer mortality is increasing again we have to do something different about uh, regarding what we have done uh, till yet till now and uh, in terms of uh, years of life lost, it, it has a very uh, 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 a huge impact in, in, in life in, of a lot of uh, women. In conclusion of this paper, cervical uh, cancer rates and the risk of occurrence is increasing uh, at the moment, and uh, we need this like a priority in national cervical vaccination and screening programs. That's logical. But at the moment, we have a lot of cases. So brachytherapy, I talked with Professor Sergei. Uh, he told me that around 95% of, uh, of departments uh, have a, a brachy uh, the, uh, the department or a brachy facility. So we have to use it. And not only for therapies, not only for breasts. We have to use it because we have it. This is a good tool. So. Uh, coming to visit these different sites to decide if really SBRT is competing or is helping. Sometimes we must never have the idea that we must exclude one or the other. We can work together. Why th there is brachytherapy boost? Because we can give higher doses in very big tumors. In which other part of the body we can treat a seven centimeters tumor and uh, arrive to a complete uh, uh, the separation of the tumor? He, this is only possible thanks to brachytherapy because the doses we are giving inside it are so high. Why is this important? Because uh, the mortality by cervix cancer, in, of course, in Africa, Latin America is very high, but in Eastern European countries and Russia is really a problem. Compared with Spain, for example, we, we see that you have uh, a lot of work to do. It's really a major challenge. Well, we can move to the new techniques. For example, this very nice paper, short course PET-based simultaneous integrated boost for locally advanced cervical cancer. You can see the isodose curves are really uh, excellent. If you do this uh, integrated boost, you are achieving very high doses in the right position. This is really, that's, that's very nice because we can do that nowadays, not 10 years ago. But it's really uh, the, the best solution. We, we can use the BMAT, we can use the protons, of course, we can do, so we can achieve very nice uh, uh, distribution. So, which is the trend in the States, uh, of course, we always use this, uh, these papers to know. Well, we have seen that in this review of 
7,000 cases of cervical cancer, 63% uh, of them with brachytherapy. The trend of the use of brachytherapy is, was decreasing in last years, even with uh, uh, this uh, point here. That means that at this moment, a lot of people decided that SBRT and simultaneity integrated would could be the best solution to avoid this invasiveness of uh, brachytherapy. So that was the decreasing in the use, and that's what happened. That in the cases treated with brachytherapy or no brachytherapy, not only in local control or uh, but in cause-specific survival and overall survival, we have more than 10-15 percent of difference. This is critical. This is really uh, impressive. So what's what's happening? We thought that was the same, and this is not the same. So lack of brachytherapy decreases the cause-specific survival uh, and overall survival in, in cervical cancer. Keep this in mind. And they finish with this decline in brachytherapy used for cervical uh, cancer ha is happening related to the alternative treatment techniques with IMRT. And the conclusion is that physicians are strongly urged to use brachytherapy whenever possible. Of course, you have not a facility and the patient must uh, go uh, 100 kilometers, you can decide what to do. I know what I do. The patient must go to the other center. In fact, they recommend to refer the patients to centers of excellence, is the name, but not really excellence, to centers with experience in brachytherapy. And again, we know that a lot of years ago, we know that brachytherapy is the most important prognosis factor for local control. Nowadays, it's the same. There are other uh, factors, but this is the most important. And again, we have this editorial in the Red Journal, the where curative radiation therapy for locally advanced cervical, brachytherapy is not optional. So you can use this editorial to go to your uh, gynecological committee to say, we need that or we need to send patients to do that. Because patients treated in a small volume centers are less likely to receive brachytherapy. So they tend, when they have it, to uh, receive lower dose to point A and require a longer average time to complete treatment. All these reasons uh, result in a lower local control. Many women are receiving inadequate treatments that could result in unnecessary recurrences, toxicities, and deaths. And we could achieve a 10% survival improvement by simply using best practice guidelines. So this is written. I think we can, uh, we should use this to be completely sure that this is not optional. Well, service brachytherapy is mandatory, but it is evolving, and this is the next step for you and for for all, but especially for you, because this case, for example, I don't know if you can see with the lights, but well, this is a standard to be case with a parametrial involvement with a CT scan. We don't know where to finish the treatment. We use the standard ovoids and tandem distribution. Well, this is okay, but we are not really treating properly this. So what is the result? Uh, one year, one year and a half after that, we have the not the central recurrence. We don't see central recurrences. We see parametrial recurrences and the patient die. So that means that we should do something different. Point A is, use, is useful, but it's not always enough. So we need parametrial needles, and we need uh, to, to have a better coverture of the parametrial area. And we, you need to use the best technique. The best technique means nowadays to add these needles in the parametrium to change the pear shape this shape of the isodose to cover this area. This is what can be achieved with several devices, for example, with the Utrecht system or the ring applicator, the Vienna ring applicator with needles. So in this case, you can see that you change the isodose. You no longer have a round isodose. You have an elliptic isodose that allows you to treat. Of course, this is an advance in the technique. It's not easy at the beginning, but we need to learn that and we need to use that. Well, maybe 
we have no these uh, devices, but uh, oh, let me show first. Yes. Uh, so this is only to explain you why brachytherapy is working. This is an, a, a DBH, a DBH, an histogram dose volume. We are used to that if we are radiation oncologists, most of us. So in this case, we are prescribing a dose, the 100% of the dose, for example, 6.5 gray, per four fractions. In this case, all this area is the area of 150, 200. That means that um, we are giving more dose than the prescribed dose inside the volume. What does it mean? That if we give 50 gray with external radiation, I, I MRT, or we can use what we want. If we give four fractions, the equity two is 40 gray. So the total is 90 gray. That's uh, difficult to achieve with any other technique. But inside the B150, we are giving an equivalent to 115 gray, and in a small area, but not, uh, uh, not so small, we are giving more than 150 gray. This is incredible. This is the only way because we can uh, control these big tumors because we are over treating an organ that is not really necessary for the body. It's the same like in prostate. We can give very high doses, not in other parts of the body, but uterus and prostate can receive very high doses. So this is the reason because brachytherapy works. Uh, let me show. So we can give these very big uh, central doses. Of course, we can compare with uh, SBRT. And in this case, this is a, a, a paper showing that we have different options. And again, you can see the histogram, dose volume histogram with Brachy and with the cyber knife. Cyber knife, um, the best option to do a very well conformed external radiation therapy. Well, at the end, the dose, maybe a bit more in the peripheral area the, in this part, but at the end, we are giving very high doses. So we cannot compare these di two different different techniques that can be useful together because we can use external radiation with IMRT and then the brachybust. And again, keep in mind that this is a case we had years ago with a pararectal involvement that was impossible to be covered with the Utrecht system with these needles because it's far from there. And at that moment, we had, that, we had only ovoids. So we decided to insert needles. I don't know if you can see lights can be be a bit no it doesn't matter yeah well yeah it's only to show that we can insert needles through the perineum it's very useful to use the trans, uh, transrectal ultrasound but even with the finger you can do and we added to this area that was impossible to be covered we added the, these needles plastic needles and the isodose you can see then adapt perfectly this patient was treated more than five years ago and that uh, was really at that moment we did, we thought this is after external radiation. We thought that was impossible to be cured, but we did. So not always a device like a Nutrax system is, is mandatory. OK, uh, we move to postoperative uh, vaginal brachytherapy. Uh, can be substituted by external radiation? Yes, it can. But this, uh, this paper shows you that uh, target volume is well covered with both, with HDR or with IMRT. We can, it's not so difficult to treat the, the vaginal bolt, but the dose with brachytherapy is always higher, and the mean doses to the bladder rectum were significantly lower with HDR. Again, you, if you have no uh, brachy facility, you can decide. This is only preventive elective uh, radiation, but the, we cannot compare both techniques. And again, for endometrial boost uh, with brachytherapy. In some cases, when you cannot uh, undergo a surgery for endometrial carcinoma, you can use external radiation. And comparing the triplet tandem applicator, we used uh, two, uh, these two tandems applicator for, for uterus. And a static R plan or an VMAT, at the end again, High dose rate brachytherapy results in mild acute toxicity, but with relatively lower doses to surrounding normal tissues compared with SBRT. 
uh, and again we have no problem with the movements of the uterus that you know that can change from the time you perform the uh, the CT for the treatment and the moment you deliver the external radiation with brachy everything is at place so this is another reason to do that this is the main area. Everybody th uh, thinks that uh, cervix carcinoma uh, c should be treated with brachy, but what about breast? Well, at this moment, uh, we can do, uh, we can focus on these two possibilities: uh, brachy boost. Why brachy boost? Because the biological effects results in higher doses, and I will try to show you why we need higher doses. Why? Because we know that from this paper, but in the Lancet, in uh, the, uh, 14 years ago, we know that the radiation is always useful, but not only for local control, but for survival. But we must wait. We must wait not five years. We need 10, we need 15 years to realize that we are arriving to this conclusion that is, is really impressive. Every four local recurrence is avoided, one death by, by breast cancer is avoided at 15 years. We are talking about thousands of women. We are talking about a lot of women that depends on the local control will have influence in the, in the cure. In the cure. So in breast, we need results not at five years. We need at least 10, better 15 or 20. When we have this, maybe you know, this is a very big study, the, uh, this trial, the European trial, with over 5,000 patients, maybe you know. And in this case, compared in with negative margins, with free margins, we they compared 50 grade to the breast. This was done 25, 30 years ago, of course. That compared with 66 grade with the boost. That was called the boost no boost trial. So at that moment, we realized that at 10 years and at 20 years, there's a big difference. So the boost is mandatory in some cases. In, in which cases? Well, it depends. The main factor is age and we, you can compare the 50 years old 40 35 less than 30, 35 we have an increasing risk of recurrence and if you see no plateau is achieved what does it mean? That we will have new tumors, probably new tumors, not recurrences, but 20 years. But we will have this risk. And if you can see the big differences in the first five years, so we should do something at the beginning. So we must choose our best technique to have the best local control to be able to reduce this, this risk. So this is another uh, table to show the same in every age. Uh, in this case, is with boost and without boost at 30, 40, 50, 60 years. So in every, uh, in at a, any age, uh, the boost is useful. But of course, in older patients, the the difference is not so high. So we can see here, with 40 less than 40 years old, 40 to uh, to 50, and over 50, over 60. So you can see that there's always a difference. Boost is always useful, but of course, in these cases, maybe it's not so different. As this. So this is one of the reasons because we have this line, 50 years, 50 years old. Maybe we could say premenopausal, postmenopausal, but uh, all the studies we used age, 50. So what does it mean that under 50, we need to do something more? Of course, 66 gray is uh, good enough probably, but not in every situation. And again, this study compared different ways of the boost. And in this study, they compared the electrons, photons, and interstitial. And you can see that the interstitial, even if this was not the goal of this trial, we saw that brachytherapy was offering something better. At that moment was low dose rate brachytherapy. 
So the technique is important. Well, which is the competition at the moment? Well, why to use needles when we can use a simultaneous integrated ghost? Okay, this is really a lot of uh, hospitals are doing in, in Spain too. Uh, not a lot, but a few hospitals are doing. And they, th they say everything is okay. We are achieving very high doses. We can give 3.2 gray here. In uh, risk cases, 3.5. But you can see that with this, the equivalent with the alpha beta is 60 gray or 68. I have just told you that we needed 66 as a standard boost when needed. Not always, but when needed. So this is not really a very high dose. So for a lot of cases will be useful, but not for every case. And again, in this study that in both high trial, they have seen that, of course, with these higher doses, we have more complications. Well, maybe with brachytherapy too. So we can, uh, we must wait a bit. We can use that as a standard, but in cases with high risk, probably this is a low dose. We need something more. So. Uh, of course, we can use the simultaneous integrated with this, this study with uh, 700 cases is very good and with mm, very good local control. This is excellent, 98.9%. This is perfect. But this is a mix of patients. That means that, of course, no, it's not invasive. These are promising results, but not all breast cases require a boost. And this is a mix of patients. And we need results at long-term uh, follow-up. I'm completely sure that integrated boost will be one of our standard tools in the next future, but we, we must do something more. How to increase those in high risk cases? What does it mean, high risk cases? Well, uh, we know that brachytherapy can give a high dose around and a high dose inside. I've shown you the DBH of the cervix. Again, for, for breast is the same. We are giving a peripheral dose, but inside we have very high doses. So this is the option that the therapy offers to have a better local control. And for and in this nice study, they compared the, if we consider the peripheral dose, for example, in uh, in a partial breast radiation, 10 fractions, 3.4, this is the, the dose, with an alpha beta 4 that can be equivalent to 42 gray, well, it's enough probably, but if we consider the dose gradient, that means the dose that is inside the volume, the equivalent dose can be, poss possible can be 67. So, if we give a single fraction of a gray, we have maybe not 70 gray, but 20 gray. What does it mean? We are giving very high doses. This is the way we use for the what we call the fast boost. The patient is is coming to the hospital. We do the we localize the area to treat. We insert the needles, and we with a roller we have the distance to treat. So in this case, we use the treatment with a single fraction, seven or eight gray, and in this case, we can calculate in 10 minutes. So with this. We have published our results in young ladies. What means young ladies? Uh, until 45. These are high risk cases. We have so, I've shown you before. And we have at uh, 10 years, 4.4%. Maybe you remember that in the other, we were around, well, this is the comparison. In young ladies under 40 grays, in, with our study, we have 5.6% at 10 years, compared with other studies. So we are offering something better with brachytherapy. And if compare these cases, again, with the 50 gray is not enough, of course, but with 66 compared with this single fraction, so we are completely sure that we are offering. So this is our standard treatment. In all uh, women under 50, uh, we are using this single boost in one fraction, in one morning. Of course, we can have the other problem, positive margins or close margins. Again, we know that we have the double of recurrences. In these cases, we have published to these two papers showing that brachytherapy can offer something to that. And what's that? We have published with positive margin, close margin until two millimeters or two 
to four millimeters. This is not nowadays considered like close margin, but in these cases with three fractions, one night with the needles, in this case a bit more uncomfortable, but the dose is far higher. So we have arrived to this conclusion that we have very good results at 10 years better, just the same as with negative margins. And if we compare in, all, uh, in older women, and this is by age, in women over 50 years old, we have seen that reintervention is not mandatory. Of course, if positive margin is possible, it's better a resection, of course. But it's not mandatory. With brachytherapy, we are able to have this 4.6% uh, of recurrences at 10 years, the standard recurrence. So I think this is, and with very uh, small uh, effects. Well, uh, the, the other aspect is partial breast irradiation, of course. In this case, we have these two big studies, the, the uh, phase three study of the Jack Astro and the, with external radiation, the import low, this is considered at the moment. We have other studies that I'm not going to show you because it's, uh, we need more time. But uh, in, in this case, with external radiation, we have very good results. Of course, but we have tested the external radiation with a rapid trial, and we know that we have an increased late toxicity. Why? Because we are treating the skin. We are treating the ribs, I said to you uh, the other uh, talk. And with brachytherapy, with interstitial brachytherapy, we are not uh, treating that. This is our CTB for brachy, and this is our CTB for external radiation. We are treating three more, uh, our volume three, uh, three times uh, greater. And what to do with exclusive brachytherapy, with multicatheter? Well, we are using ultrasound. We can see the way to insert the area to be treated. In this case, we have these implants, you know, probably. So uh, we like a lot the perioperative implants because we are working together with the surgeons. So we are completely sure that we insert the guide needle or the guide tube. This just is in the center where the clips in the bottom are inserted. In the same moment, you insert this catheter. You close close the cavity and you finish your implantation. And then with that you can see your clips, their estimated tumor, uh, tumor bed and the CTV and you are treating completely with this uh, 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 properly. In the, and the results at the at long term are really very, very good. The cost message, but the dose to the organ that risk is lower than expected with external radiation, with any kind of external radiation technique. Maybe it's not so important, but brachytherapy is offering this for you, okay? And of course, we can use brachytherapy as a salvage, and at this moment, this is showing that we have more than 90% of local control in, in recurrences, in breasts that have been radiated previously with interstitial brachytherapy. There's no other technique for that. Okay, and of course we are moving to the short sessions, uh, in maybe in three sessions, or even, uh, it's, it's long to show you, but I mean that we are testing brachytherapy in only two days. And even we have uh, uh, treated uh, with the VIPBR trial uh, with three fractions. We have treated 70 cases at the moment. We, this is an ongoing trials. And even with a single fraction in all patients over 65 have shown that uh, a single fraction can be useful. We will see in the future, in the next future. So, we move to prostate, a, a quick view, only to show that everybody knows that the prostate is a matter of dose and time of follow-up. Again, at five years, everything works in prostate. But we, if we treat a patient 58 years old, we have 20 years, so we need to do something new. We, you, maybe you know this uh, paper by Grimm, Peter Grimm, that showing that brachytherapy is compared with all other techniques when you use brachytherapy therapy is useful, but not everybody uh, believes that. So again, uh, the Memorial Sloan Kettering proposed this uh, 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 review, the experience, with very high doses with external radiation, over 81 gray. We never give so much dose with <laughs> external radiation at the moment. But in all situations, low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk, the higher doses were better. So it's a matter of those. And they compared their own results 
with 86 gray with external radiation, AMRT, the best technique in the more or less long catering, and with the Bracky Boost. And these are the results. The difference is impressive. Whenever you use Bracky Boost, you have better results. No in low risk cases. This is for intermediate and for high risk cases. And again, you know the Peter Hoskin study comparing that. I will move to that. And again, this is very nice because it's a, a recent study with LDR with sheets as a boost. And again, you can see these very impressive results in intermediate risk, in high risk. Even uh, that means that the boost is completely different. And I'd like to show you the, the next slide because it's very nice because we are moving to hypofractionated schemes. Prostate is better treated with higher doses per fraction. We know nowadays by the alpha beta. And this is the profit study, the cheap study, uh, giving 60 gray in 20 fractions. This is one of the standards nowadays. But you can see the the, iso the, the curve. You can see compared with the study by Canada, the Asten I've shown you before, the Anderson with seeds. You can see that we have a almost a plateau. We have a very uh, horizontal line when we use brachytherapy and compare with the others and with those, these are going down. So I think that this is the future. Of course, the brachy boost and even for survival. Eh? But I will move this quickly. But even for survival, for uh, when using brachytherapy, we have papers that show that uh, can be better, not only for local control. Of course, brachytherapy offers the best DBH because, again, compared with other techniques that can are very nice, of course, we can use external radiation. But again, we have this DBH. We have this high dose inside. And this there's no way with external radiation to achieve that. Of course, we can move to the low risk cases with, with the SBRT, five fractions. This is very nice at the moment, probably will be one of the options in the future. And in this case, we can see that it works. But again, this is with silver knife. There's not a lot of people who can use that. And, uh, well, we can compare in these cases, uh, let me show this, that th what is important is the nadir of PSA. We have few papers with uh, CLINAC accelerator for that. So at this moment, we must wait for that, but probably in the future, the SBRT can be a very good option competitive with external with brachytherapy, but not at the moment. We will see with this nadir. And only uh, in, I want to show you uh, flashes of other options. Now, of course, we can use endoluminal brachytherapy in a small tumors. This is a standard SBRT of lung. It's really a very good advance. But the volume, you can see, it is not easy to see. The volume of brachytherapy is smaller. So for a smaller volumes, not for big volumes or for relatively relatively small. You need endobronchial, but brachytherapy is useful, absolutely useful. Why? Because you can treat this tumor that I don't know if you can see here. Well, it's a pity, but you can see how the tumor can disappear completely because you are treating only this. You can use SBRT, of course, but if you have brachy, why not to treat this in six fractions uh, in an outpatient basis? And again, it's for, uh, for tracheal tumors. Again, this is a small tumor there on up. You can see, again, brachytherapy is absolutely uh, the best way to treat this. And the esophagus, again, because you have the problem that the proximity of heart and Lungs uh, and lungs. In this paper, in the, by the Anderson, they say that it's really a problem. And brachytherapy is there, and you can offer not exclusive brachytherapy, but you can offer as a boost. Why? Because okay, because forty percent of recurrences are local. And this is a matter of those. We cannot give more than uh, than 60 gray in, in the esophagus. And they gave for nasopharynx. For nasopharynx, again, we have the same. We have compared this study in Vienna and Amsterdam. And when using brachytherapy boost, no recurrence when using external radiation. So again, uh, the brachy boost in nasopharynx is useful and only one night with the applicator is very easy to use. And uh, only in interstitial tongue carcinomas, of course, because we can preserve the function because we are treating a smaller volumes. We can avoid, we are doing perioperative implants, so we avoid 
uh, myglosectomies. We are doing partial uh, glossectomies with brachytherapy. So in these cases, the results are better because the volume is always shorter. And of course, in base of tongue, in tonsil, in all these situations, brachybus can offer very good results. It's a bit more difficult, of course, and at the moment is not uh, cannot compete with IMRT, of course. But again, keep in mind that we can combine both things, and this is uh, another option. And that the, those to the mask to the masticatory muscles with brachytherapy is far lower. And again, only to show you one case of a lip cancer, in five days you can treat this tumor and the tumor can completely disappear uh, with uh, interstitial needles. This is not possible with uh, uh, external radiation in five days. The anal canal, again, you can give a boost. You can preserve the, sp the sphincter. Again, this is very easy to do. And in two days, you can treat the patient after external radiation. And of course, in only f the last pictures to show that in skin tumors, you can do, of course, you can treat this tumor in different ways but it's not easy. You can insert the needles. This is the reaction and this is the result one year later. So how to, you can treat this in other way. Brachytherapy is really, and again for these nose uh, tumors that you can treat with these molds, again you can give a dose that can adapt perfectly to the nose. This is easy to do with very nice results or even for the scalp you can treat these tumors and you can achieve these nice results that that probably with VMAT you can nowadays uh, you are able to do. And uh, this is another example of the finger and this is uh, the, the orbit. So the, I think this is the last one. Yes, cervix and endometrium brachytherapy cannot be substituted by SBRT, we know. Breast brachytherapy allows for better long term, not early, but long term local control in risk cases. In low risk cases, APBI is probably effective even in two days. We will show, we will try to show in a few years. In prostate, we know and we should insist that the PSA control at survival in low risk, at the moment, the best option is brachytherapy, probably as BRT can be in the future. And, but the, and the brachy boost is mandatory. And in head, neck, esophagus, bronchus, all of them benefit. Therefore, non-invasive techniques offering better comfort are desirable, of course, to avoid invasiveness. But the long-term uh, control is the main uh, important uh, issue. And brachytherapy in selected situations is still the best option. This is Valencia, the new Valencia. I invite you to come there. And this is the old Valencia. And please don't forget that all things adapted to the, our times are really important. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your interesting. Thank you so much for your interesting presentation. Uh, the use of brachytherapy in different tumor localizations. Unfortunately, uh, the presentation has been longer than we suggested. For discussion, we have only six minutes, maximum for two questions we have time. The question is very important, extremely important. In fact, uh, brachytherapy is still very important. Or maybe brachytherapy is surpassed by uh, accurate distance method of radiation. Please, dear audience, the questions to the speaker. Thank you so much for very interesting lecture. I have the question. In case of treatment of, bre of the breast cancer, did you see radio-induced tumors? 
for example, like for example, like angiosarcoma. Did you see such kind of cases? Yeah, I, I remember two cases of angiosarcoma, really, in the brachy area, but was treated always after a boost, that means after external radiation too, but we have treated over 1,600 cases. Maybe there's another more sarcoma, but I think the incidence is exactly the same. Are the questions the audience? Uh, a brief question. I know that you have a huge experience treating uh, in re case of repeated uh, uh, radiotherapy uh, of uh, breast cancer patients. In this situation, we are afraid of the cosmetic defects after repeated radiation. This is a very good question. But compare the results of uh, cosmetic results against mastectomy. It's impossible. This is the reason because we cannot conduct a trial comparing both because it's not ethical to remove the breast against to preserve the breast. We are the the European uh, Breast uh, Brachy Working Group that I'm in it, in it uh, is preparing a paper comparing 300. Salvage brachytherapy with 300 cases of mastectomy is a per matched analysis, and they have shown at the moment that in low risk cases we have a 98% of local control, the second local control at five years. 98%. This is better than mastectomy. So, this will be to discuss in the future. Our suggestion is in low risk, according to the, the guidelines, probably the best option is not mastectomy. We'll see.